This week's scenario is Recon from the 2015 Steamroller Packet. The scenario does not have the kill box artifice in effect and consists of a rectangular zone in the center of the board flanked by two flags. The flags can be dominated for one CP, the enemy objective can be destroyed for one CP, and the zone can be controlled for one CP or dominated for two CPs. First player to five control points or caster an assassination wins the game. Greetings, this is Ironlich W, and this week in the Advanced Maneuver Scramble, I got matched up with Tadar. Of the two lists I have, I elected to bring Asphyxius the Hellbringer, because looking at my opponent's list, I'm seeing that he has Shorsha, who has immunity to cold, therefore taking out Gorshade, Gorshade's feet. So I didn't want to run the risk that if my opponent were to select Sorsha, Gorshade would not have a feat and I would have to struggle and have an uphill battle on how to kill my opponent. So sticking with Sexius, he's got a couple of strong jacks that can take a lot of damage as well as uh, not necessarily be as afraid of the Winter Guard Death Star should he end up taking the Sorsha list, which is what I'm expecting. Furthermore, I like the in this matchup. I like utilizing the Texas Raiders with Ashen Vale. I would like to run them up there as, as as fast as possible to try and engage the Winter Guard Infantryman or the Nis Hunters or type one of those units. With Ashen Vale, the Raiders would have an insanely high defense and would do a very good job of locking up. And should they get that chance to attack a Jack get some early damage on the opposing Warcaster. I'd also like to take advantage of the Bane Riders having them kind of uh, charge the objective as we knew beforehand what the scenario was going to be. And they'd be PAL-17 with Scything Touch, meaning I'd only need two or three Bane Riders on the objective to kill it. I just, uh, the objective I took with my list, as always, is Effigy of Valor just to prevent the Raiders from being scared by Deathjack. For the final round of the scramble, I got faced against Ironlich W's Crix armies. Uh, looking at his two lists, he's got a Gorshade 3 list and a Gatsby 2 list. So I decided to go with Sorsha 2 because she has immunity to cold, so I'm taking Gorshade 3's uh, ability to stationary her and assassinate her off the table. Um, not to mention that this list has a lot of gun capabilities to it. Uh, it has Iris, so I could disrupt. Death Jack, um, and between some aim sprays and some some NIS shooting, um, I'm hoping to be able to deal with Satixis. So I feel like this list has a really good chance against the uh, Gaspy list, uh, which I'm immediately assuming he's going to drop. I just don't see him placing the Gorshe three drop into the mix, uh, knowing that I have uh, Epic Sorsha available to me. Uh, taking Effigy of Valor because command checks suck. For deployment, I started by placing Asphyxius near the center. I want to take advantage of the hill that's near me. And then I put the Bane Riders on the right side as their, their primary target is to go after the enemy objective. Put my all my support units in the back, such as Wishai Combine, Gorman, Pacifrin. And then I put the Reaper on the right side as he's probably going to back up where I think I want my Raiders to go. For my deployment, my opponent's got a lot of advanced deploys, so it's going to be a little bit hard to predict where certain things are. Um, I know that the Bane Riders are dead center, so I'm going to put Beast in the dead center, uh, both for zone contesting and killing the Knights. Uh, because there's a forest on my right hand side, that's most likely where I'm going to be putting the Nis. So, conversely, I put my infantry on my Winterguard infantry on the left hand side. Um, and then, you know, support staff go in the center. Uh, my main play is to, for this game is to ignore the flags and just push the zone and hope that I can open up an opportunity to uh, go for an assassination on Gatsby with either Beast or Sorsha. One thing I like about this list is the fact that half it advanced deploys. And I can set it up based off how my opponent has set up. So I put the Raiders on the far right because they're not afraid of the water like the Jacks would be. And that's kind of where I want them to go anyways. 
I put King Corner in the middle because he's the utility button, can go after whatever I need him to, and then Death Jack on the far left flank. My advanced deploy, uh, I'm actually a little not sure, kind of uh, hesitant aware about I want to put. I had a forest on one side that I could use, uh, the snipers could use camouflage, but decide instead to put them behind the fence because the Satixis are on that side, and then Eris on the right for Death Jack. Crick's turn one, I go ahead and look at how my opponent has it set up. I'm thinking how I want to get rid of key pieces such as Eris and the Widowmakers. So I allocate opponent focus to the Reaper and the Kinkworm as I expect that they will be doing a lot of running. Then knowing that the Widowmakers have a pretty far threat range, I don't want them to be able to stand still and get an aiming bonus. So I only advance the... Uh, the Raider is a little far forward, staying outside of 14, kind of use the, the size of the zone to gauge my distances. Then I advance the Captain as well, and make sure I hide her. And then once I start with Bane Riders, I kind of run them to get them kind of spread out because I know that they're going to have range on the objective as soon as they are able to legally attack it. Once the Bane Riders have spread out, I run Pacifarin. He's really a tricky piece to play with as he generally never does the same thing twice for me. Sometimes I run him out there early, sometimes I keep him back, depending on what the opposing Warcaster does. Once he's done, Asphyxius activates, he casts Ashen Veil on the Raiders through Pacifarin. Then he casts Mobility and advances himself, leaving himself with one focus. Then I activate the Reaper, have him run up. Plan is once the Raiders have cleared out the right side, he will be able to go after and run up there and hopefully the Raiders will be around to tie up and he won't be damaged by anything. Then Kinkworm activates and I have him run a little far forward. I want to make sure that I keep him on the zone in case my opponent moves up Eris. With the Kinkworm having stealth, he'll have some protection. Then Death Jack activates and Death Jack advances. I run Gorman to make sure that I'm able to use him next turn, because sometimes I forget to run him. And the Wither Shadow Combine activates last, and they run to keep pace with the rest of the army. Kator, turn one. So, my opponent runs uh, generically towards me. I, he wasn't as aggressive as I thought he was going to be with the Raiders. Um, I was actually hoping to to get some shots off with the Widowmaker, so I'm gonna definitely need to advance them up. Um, but I need to prepare for the second round, then the second charge. I, I'm not a huge fan of going up against uh, Cricks uh, and, and having to let them go first, um, but it is it is what it is, and I'm gonna have to prepare for it. So I'm gonna run the Widowmakers up and attempt to take some pot shots. Not really actually expecting much out of them, um, more because I want to set up the Winter Guard behind them so that when the Satixis come in, um, hopefully I'll be able to uh, trade out half of a, a Satixis unit for some Widowmakers and, and get some sprays on the, uh, the Winter Guard, from the Winter Guard infantry on any of the Satixis that, are, that have killed uh, Widowmakers in the prior turn. I advance up uh, Holt and uh, Lady uh, Ayana just uh, in preparations. Uh, they're kind of out of place. All of the jacks are on the far right side. Um, and I'm not necessarily sure if running them. I probably should have ran them actually thinking about it. Um, they, I, I just advanced up Iris into the woods, which was a horrible decision on my part. Um, I wanted to take a shot at Ganger Worm to disrupt him, forgetting the fact that actually he's stealth, I couldn't shoot him if I wanted to. And even if I was able to disrupt him because of the benefit of an additional move from being with Asphyxius, Ganger Worm could easily just move up and then move again and engage Iris and then kill her in a following turn. Uh, so I'm, I'm trading Iris for no value, which is just plain sucks. 
the NIS advance up, getting myself into a position where I can get a couple pot shots if I need to, but ideally I want to set up for a charge uh, on some of the jacks next turn, and then setting up the winter guard for next turn sprays. Crick's turn two, I'm looking at how my, my opponent has unpacked his army. I'm seeing that he's got Aeris and a Force within line of sight. So I, my immediate plan is to have Will Shadow Combine upkeep Ashenvale and the Raiders, and then I go ahead and allocate two points of focus to Cankerworm, as his primary objective is going to be to go and eat Aeris alive, just because she's mean and does things like disrupt people. And I start my activations with the, the Satixis Raider Captain, who is going to advance and do Desperate Pace on the Raiders. Desperate Pace will give them two additional inches of movement, which will give them a 14 inch charge threat. So then I activate the Raiders, and I have the first few charge as far as I could get as deep into enemy lines as I could, charging the Widowmakers. And I get three up there, kind of as an initial screen. Then the rest only run about halfway there. The reason why I'm trying to keep them back is so that if something were to happen to those first three, I want to try and stay out of range of the sprays of the Winter Guard Death Star. Hopefully trying to keep as many of my raiders alive as possible. And relying on those initial charging raiders to kill anyone is kind of not a good idea as they are met six Widowmakers I believe are defense 14 I only end up killing one by sheer luck but the initial stage of my plan is complete I'm moving on I think the Bane Riders next and they take the order to charge I'm trying to charge the early Nis and and do some gemming on the left side of the flank however the charge winds up just a hair short so I just kind of run up the rest of the the riders just to do some screening for my caster as well as make sure that they have some kind of charge lane for the next turn. Then I activate Sixius, I have him move up and tow the hill because I'm quite uncertain I don't think I'm able to get him in the zone this turn but so he ends up towing the hill and he casts mobility and sits on three focus. Then the Reaper activates and he just advances, getting ready for the next turn. And then Withershot Combine activates and advances and put a pup string on Kinkworm so he manages to hit the shifty Eris. Then I advance Gorman and have him throw down a smoke bomb in front of Asphyxius, that way no one can see past the cloud. Once Gorman is done, I have Pacifera and run up. I wanted to collect souls, but then I realized that even if I ran full distance, he's unable to get in range. So then I move on to Kankworm, who charges Eris. With Puppet Strings, he should be able to hit her, needing only nines on the charge. I successfully hit Eris, using my tail attack because it's the stronger of the two attacks, and he kills her. Then because he's got an affinity of, with Asphyxius, he, go, he gets to make a full advance after he activates, or he's done activating inside his fixes command range, and he moves back. I move up Death Jack just to look intimidating, and that is end turn two. Caught our turn two. Again, he didn't necessarily advance up as aggressive as I, I'm used to. Um, as a troll player, usually cricks are just jamming down my throat. Um, this is a bit more of a passive approach, and that probably may be due to the fact of the amount of guns that I have. Uh, as expected, he has hit the Winter Guard with some of the Tissatixes, though. Uh, so I do have the ability of putting Freezing Grip onto the Sitixis Raiders, which will help deal with the defense issues that I'm going to have with them. Um, ideally, uh, Joe could give the Winter Guard three dice to spray, which helps with the hits. But if I can actually make them stationary, then I don't even have to worry about doing the three dice to hit, and I can still provide tough and fearless to them. Um, the problem that I'm running into is that the raiders that I could that are within range for me to advance Sorsha up and get the the freezing grip on 
did not kill the targets that they charged. So they're still engaged, which drives their defense up even higher. Um, now I can use Lucky Charm off of Reinhold and um, I can use Silas and the, between the two of them uh, I can get two or I can get four dice to hit dropping the two lowest. So I still have a potential uh, with a boosted hit of, of being able to pull off the freezing grip. Uh, daily what I'm looking at is that if I can freeze and grip the Raiders, uh, I can give desperate pace to the Winter Guard, and then basically once they've been, the Raiders become stationary, I can just advance up past them and spray the line that's even further back. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get the entire unit, they're, they're going to be too far away, but if I can clear off half or over half of that unit, their ability to, um, to actually get any damage done on that side goes downhill quickly. Uh, and that's because uh, with the Bob and Weave and Iron Flesh, um, the Satixis are just going to have a horrible time trying to kill those guys. Uh, now, that being said, you'll notice, uh, you know, we're already a bit into this turn. I haven't moved anything yet. Um, I go into the tank hard on this turn, and I mean really, really hard. Um, and to, unfortunately... Um, I it's gonna cost me I, if you ever go into the tank super hard um, you're gonna end up uh, you better either win the game or you're gonna you're gonna lose because you're gonna spend so much time uh, just now with all those those sixes and fives that you saw was actually me rolling and um, I missed off screen I missed the Satixus Raiders uh, with uh, you know ones and twos and then of course you know fate be with me uh, I have to roll against my own unit and lo and behold I stick uh, freezing grip onto the widow uh, makers so that's extremely unfortunate although I do have the advantage now that since the widow makers are stationary the Satixis are no longer engaging so I should be able to clear off the ones that I have there so silver lining I guess you know it kind of worked out doesn't necessarily get me what I want which was the ability to move past them but I should be able to at least clear off the ones that are there um, and I'm just kind of going through my activations. I took a uh, stepped away from one of the Satixis and uh, he attempted a free strike uh, with the marksman but missed. Uh, Kale Bylock is going to go ahead and start shooting. And this is just basically me trying to uh, take, a, take a breather because uh, I got pretty uh, tilted after I met, missed so horribly on the Satixis and then hit so amazingly on my own units with the freezing grip because that really kind of drove my plans. Um, watching this video, and this is something that we've said before, is you tend to look at what you're doing and reassess why were you doing it, like asking yourself, and I'm kind of looking at this video and looking at the table state now, there are Satixis Raiders at the bottom of the screen, and yes, that is an issue, but Gatsby's nowhere near that bottom flag, so I really should not be devoting so much resources towards those statistics uh, when all I could really do is just jam them up with a couple things, prevent any dominate or any uh, any zone positioning of that flag, um, so that it doesn't become an avenue, and then drive the rest of my force towards the center of the table and the top of the table, where all the actual action is happening with the Bane Riders and all the Jacks. Um, and this is just one of those situations where, you know, I'm, I'm devoting actions and I'm devoting time and I'm not gaining anything out of the game. Um, yes, I'm killing Satixis Graders. That's great. That's not going to win me the game. Uh, my plan going into this was to kill Gatsby and all of the moves that I have done this turn up until that point are not driving me to that goal. And that's something that I've got to constantly improve on because this isn't the first game nor will it probably be the last game. Uh, where I devote actions and time to something that does not provide a resolution to the game. It just continues delaying the game even further and, and eating up my time. So that's definitely something that I need to work on. Uh, the Winter Guard are going and we're just taking sprays and pot shots. <laughs> Still trying to clear out that those Satixis. Um, they're not engaged anymore so they're easier to hit. Um, and I, I didn't want to devote too many of my Winter Guard forward because I know in the next turn the rest of the Satixis are coming. 
uh, at, you know, I just said I'm not going to devote time to it, but at the same time, I don't want to hand him Winter Guards just for the hell of it. I want to give him enough to, to, to make the the uh, the zone contestable, but not enough that I'm, I'm basically just handing him my unit, because in the following turn, then Gatsby will run down to the bottom and try and start uh, controlling the flag. He's got Bane Riders in the zone. They're prepped for going after that objective, so... I think I'm going to leave Beast 09 relatively, uh, you know, behind it. Uh, if I can trade out the objective for Beast 09 being able to, able to engage up those Bane Riders and Thresher them, um, that should be enough of, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll trade a, a control point uh, for killing the Riders. Uh, and then I just need to get myself into position where the Nis will be able to, I'm going to have to give him a couple Nis, which means he'll have souls. But if I can give him a couple Nis, maybe get some damage on Canker Worm, um, and then set it up so that three or four of my Nis in the in the following turn uh, can go after Death Jack. Um, I have a feeling that since I don't have Eris anymore, I'm going to have to stall Death Jack by feeding him Nis, uh, and then you know giving him the ability to get you know one or two souls, and then he'll need those souls to boost. Uh, to kill one or two more Nis, and then just keep that chain going. I'll, I'll feed him Nis uh, for the motherland. Uh, they're just a bunch of pointy elves, anyways. Who cares? Uh, so here we go for some charges on Canker Worm, and I, I think I managed to get one or two on to Death Jack. Uh, just trying to to get Canker Worm damaged and to to jam up Death Jack for, for a following turn. I still want to go with the original plan. I think my best option. In this game is to somehow apply Beast 09 or Sorsha to Gatsby. So just advancing up the NIS, getting him to position, uh, making sure that the UA, uh, whose name all of a sudden I've forgotten, Valachev? Yes, make sure that Valachev uh, can't be targeted out because I want to have the option to, if I get down to, you know, three or four NIS, um, so hot swapping. Uh, Iron Flesh onto the Nis, and then really making Death Jack's job difficult trying to kill them. Uh, use them as a, as a speed bump. But I have just spent a huge amount of time and have made no progress for it. And that sucks. But this is the things that you learn. Craig's turn three. I went ahead and dodged a massive bullet on my opponent's behalf. He tried to freeze the Raider unit, and he ended up freezing his Widowmakers instead. So I decided not to waste my luck and jump on this opportunity as fast as I can. I noticed my opponent only has a few models in the zone. The Bane Riders are more capable of dealing with the objective. I just need to make sure the rest of the Raiders run full throttle in there and lock up as many of the opposing units as possible. We're shot at the Wither Shadow Combine upkeep to Ashen Vale and the Raiders. I have Vesiferin Advanced to make sure that he's going to get some souls from the Nis. I have the Raider Captain Advanced and do Desperate Pace on the Raiders again so that they have that 14 inch threat or a 16 inch run if I want. Then the Raiders activate and they take the Aura to charge. And I mean, I try and take a lob, no, uh, a long shot on Beast 09 with a the charge. Then everyone else just tries to charge in a manner so that they use their reach to engage as many of the Winter Guard as possible. Then I go ahead and use my mini feet this turn. I think I used my mini feet this turn. I can't remember. One turn or another I used the mini feet. Anyhow, because the Widowmakers are, are stationary from Sorsha's Icy Grip, they go ahead and they fall beneath the Raiders. However, if their net's not frozen, the Raiders can't hit it. And in the case of Beast 09, they just fail to do any kind of damage. So I have the Raiders in place, they're, they're jamming my opponent, and they are just being relentless and being annoying. And it does not look like I used my mini feet this turn. 
which means I probably used it last turn, or I forgot to use it, which has been known to happen once in a while. But I don't really rely on the raiders to do any kind of heavy lifting. They're just there to make you angry. So once the raiders are done, I activate Asphyxius. I have him move up just a little bit, enough to where he can tow the hill and tow the zone because I intend to dominate the, the zone at the end of the turn. Asphyxius casts Carnage because he's I'm going to need help to hit the Nis Hunters who have a high defense. Then he goes ahead and pops his feet because if my opponent is going to do a heavy retaliation this turn, he's going to need to use a lot of magic. Once the Asphyxius is done, I activate Cankerworm and have, knowing that Cankerworm's got that affinity move after he's done activating, I just go ahead and swing on two Nis Hunters on a nearby area. Cankerworm is hitting that effective Mat 9 because of Carnage, which gives plus two to hit against enemy models in my control area. He kills two, gives a soul to Death Jack because he's within two inches, and a soul to Persiferin. Then he moves out of the way. Then once Cankerworm's out of the way, Death Jack activates, he goes ahead and advances, and he kills the remaining Nis. Well, first he casts Scything Touch onto the Bane Riders, advances, then kills the remaining Nis over there. Once Death Jack is done, I go ahead and activate the Withershot Combine, who will act, who will advance, and the put Pup and Master on Gorman. Gorman's normally there for a smoke, a smoke bomb or an occasional blind bomb, but in this case I advance Gorman who uses an acid bomb, who's kind of like the Breath of Corruption of Asphyxius 1, which does if I hit you anything in the AoE takes about 12. Well, I missed the Nist even with the Puppet Master, but the deviation of the acid bomb doesn't go very far and ends up hitting 3 Nists. And with their light armor he kills 3 Nists immediately with Vesiferin being fully loaded with the souls. So Gorman has done very well. Then I activate the Bane Riders, and I have them charge the objective. The impact hits of the first one didn't hurt the objective, and then I have the second Bane Rider charge the objective in a manner that would get me impact hits on the two remaining Nis. I kill, well, not two remaining Nis, but two Nis. I kill both Nis with impact hits because they're under carnage and they've been cursed by the leader before he charged. And then the third one, third Bane Rider charges the objective. And they end up destroying the objective. So at this point, I'm looking at dominating the zone, which would put me at three control points and leave me in a relatively good position to try and clear out the zone should my opponent put anything in the zone. The Reaper advances to help block Asphyxius from any reprisal. Caught over turn three. Anybody by chance know where my army went? I seem to have misplaced it, cause it's not on the table anymore. So last turn was a bit abusive. Um, the that the the last turn was what I'm used to with cricks. Just in your face, kill your stuff, go home crying. Um, but I can't say necessarily that I was terribly surprised about it. I kind of knew that it was coming. Um, I just kind of wish I could have reduced the numbers last turn. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Anyways, I went into this turn pretty tilted. Uh, if I wasn't already tilted from my horrible turn two, uh, where I completely blew up my clock, I got even worse this turn and it just compounded the issue. Um, you know, I was looking at the table going, there's no way I can pull this off, there's no way I can pull this off, I can't win, I, he's got board control, he's got, you know, more troops than I do. And then I had to take a step back, take a breather, look at the table and go, okay, what was the intent coming into this game? How was I going to win? I was going to win by killing Gatsby. Is that possible? Yes. Possibly. I have my feet available to me and he's running down the length of the zone. So, if I Cyclone, I should be able to get up, if I can get past the topmost Bane Rider, and then get a charge lane straight to Gatsby. Um, so, it, not all is lost. 
um, I, I could potentially be able to still pull this off and, and win the way that I was intending to. Uh, becoming familiar with the scenario uh, or, or with the with the stat lines of the riders, I go ahead and activate the gobber for Lucky Charm. Um, I think I even put Silas's ability on her just to be on the safe side. Um, I activate uh, Orn Midwinter to advance him over, and basically my next few activations is to remove two models that I see becoming an issue. The Bane Rider at the top of the zone or at top of the screen, uh, which is going to prevent me from getting a charge lane on Gatsby and Gorman. Um, not necessarily Gorman is a huge threat, but I want to kill him because he may be able to trigger a free strike. Uh, so I charge a Nis Hunter in, and Nis Hunter should be able to kill Gorman, right? Mm, yep. Nope. 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 Uh, Nis Hunter completely fails to damage Gorman. Um, so, yay dice, it's just, this is happening again, but, so we go ahead and we do some more activations, shifting some things around, I want to get Beast09 up into the zone, because I've got three Bane Riders that are within Thresher formation, so I take a moment to think about it, do I really want to boost on the Bane Rider? Uh, I should be able to just hit him right out, straight out. Uh, or actually, no, I'm sorry. I was contemplating, do I want to take my fist attack, hit the hit the Bane Rider, and then take my axe attack to hit the Bane Rider again? Because I didn't give Beast 9 any focus. Uh, so two attacks to potentially kill that one target, or Thresher to kill all three. Uh, I decide to be greedy and go for Thresher, and lo and behold, I miss the Bane Rider that I really, really wanted to kill. Um, had I had two attacks, I potentially could have missed anyways because I missed the first two Bane Riders so you know in some weird world where I went with two hits I would have missed both times anyways um, but you, you can't get into it uh, the 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 goal was to kill Bane Riders so that way when I did if I won off the assassination I would have more army points available to me uh, when I when I go into figuring out ranking since this is the last round of the scramble um, so now that the Bane Rider's not dead, I've activated Orin. I've activated the the uh, uh, the the Nis Hunters. Um, the only thing I really have available to me is some of my guns, um, and it's a matter of can I activate and uh, be able to to get line of sight uh, in order to um, to hit some of the Bane Riders. Uh, to clear them out. Uh, unfortunately, it's. I mean, we're going to go through this, but the I'm not able to get either. I have issues with distance, where I don't have enough distance, or I have issues with line of sight, and I can't see things. So, how am I going to deliver Sorsha? She has a, a spell on her card that I have forgotten about up until her activation and that's cyclone and basically the way cyclone works is you're basically allowed to do a full advance and then you get to do a swing on any model uh, almost like a, a friendly thresher attack so she'll actually be able to cyclone up and then uh, kill the bane rider in order to uh, to get uh, to clear a charge target and then actually do the, the charge after the uh, the Bane Rider's dead from where the Bane Rider's base. Um, I've also contemplated about distance, uh, being able to actually to get across to things, um, and I might have to cast Boundless Charge this turn as well. Uh, but these are all things that I'm basically trying to, to think through while I'm going through Winter Guard activations. Um, I'm trying to clear out the Winter Guard so that uh, one of my Rocketeers might be able to get a rocket shot off on that that Bane Rider because I'm still under the mentality of I have no way of getting to this guy I need to get it to this guy um, so I got managed to get uh, set up so that two of the Rocketeers have uh, their ability to, to shoot rockets at to the Bane Rider and very much like the turn prior I'm, I am wasting time and wasting activations uh, trying to, to go after these Satixis. I honestly should just move things around and and not declare an attack because I'm just advancing. I'm not charging, so I don't have to attack. Uh, I could easily just advance up and then pass over the Rocketeers 
I'll pass over to the uh, uh, to the guys that actually can get a shot off on to the the Bane Rider, and just keep moving. Cause my I, I don't know if you can see at the top of the screen, my time is just screaming by, uh, and I could easily just clock myself on this. And I really want to put Sorsha's uh, hammer to Gatsby's face, cause he's been saying some pretty mean things. And I really think that he needs to pay for it because she's a nice person and she doesn't need to be treated that way. Here I'm using my control trying to do a little bit of, uh, of math. Um, and uh, trying to get a little bit of math and see if I could have the distance between the angle that she needs to take to get to the Bane Rider and then the angle that, or the distance that she'll need to go because I'm trying to decide if I want to cast Boundless Charge. Uh, popping feet, uh, attacking the Bane Rider uh, with, the, with the Cyclone under feet, uh, kills the Bane Rider. Um, I'll put the token out here in a little bit. I completely forgot to put the token out. There it is. Um, and then I go for the charge. Now I have boundless charge up. I did end up casting boundless charge, but I didn't need to. And that's, that's the unfortunate thing is, is that had I uh, given myself a little bit more time, wasn't rushed by the clock, um, I would have actually been able to go in without the boundless charge. I didn't need the extra two inches that it was going to provide me. And I go in and because I don't have, because I spent the, the focus on balance charge, I'm only able to get the one attack, Crick's which four. Uh, because of went, his armor value, I wasn't actually able to do damage. Surprised uh, me and, and kind of had my heart fun. beating kind of hard. I taunted my uh, opponent to at least kill me with Gatsby and, and nothing else. So let's see if he does it. This turn I have a lot of additional focus because Death Jack was loaded up with Nissols and Sixties had the three souls from Fiziferin as well as one from his feet. And with a shot of upkeep, Ash and Bale. So Sixius allocated two out to the Reaper, who immediately activated and then just did the power attack headbutt, boosted it, and knocked down Sorsha without doing any damage. Then I activate Cankerworm, who is going to go and just do some attacks on Sorsha and do some damage to her. Uh, at this point, I just want to kill her with Asphyxius. With Asphyxius. But I just want to do some damage in case the 60 somehow fails, which can happen. So Death Jack activates, he moves in, puts Sighting Touch on 60 for plus 2 damage just to make sure that happens, and then casts a Bone Shaker to put more damage on Sorsha and ends up killing her.